Hey guys, welcome back to the Fast Nine Podcast. Here with episode one forty eight. I'm not wearing headphones. Um, I wanted to try it without headphones, and talking out loud like this feels weird. I don't think. No, I have. I have probably done this once or twice, but uh, it definitely feels different. But anyways, guys, today's going to be UFC ninety recap. Uh, we had UFC ninety this week, and it was fucking like. It was one of those cards that we didn't expect were going to be fucking amazing. And they turned out to be one of the car- best cards of the year. No doubt about it. And, you know, we see a lot of great fights in different cards. But th- <laughs> the amount of good fights that we got to see that night were, were wow. Just wow. Um, for, yeah, that was my first reaction. I was blown away. I'm happy that I was proved wrong in one fight for sure. And, you know, like... I don't know how to say it. Like I'm gonna, I want to talk about Brandon Moreno, but I'm going to get to him in a second. And um, I just want to say one thing, you know, because I see a lot of comments and a lot of people say this, a lot of people say that. And for the people that do listen to the whole episode, I know you guys are real fans, and you guys probably, you know, like the content or somewhat enjoy it. I want to say thank you. I really do appreciate that. But I also want to say like, just because. You know, I see a comment or somebody shares something like nasty about me or just just ugly comments like you're dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. You're casual. I'm aware that I have some weird takes, but like I'm like a real fan of the sport. Right. I watch UFC as much as I can on my off time. I watch fights like, you know, five times a week. I watch at least five fights a week, if not three. But I'm, I watch fights during the week, you know, for fun, because that's how much I love watching uh, UFC you know, if I get recommended a good fight, I'm watching that fight. Like, that's just how it is. And and I study fighters. And especially when the UFC event comes on, I like I want to watch their content. You know, how the, what is it called? You know, those vlogs that the UFC puts out. I like watching those to learn a little bit about the personality. If they have a YouTube channel, I'll watch a few of their videos. Things like that. Just to learn about the fighter. And um, to to the fans out there, if, if there's people you know, that hate on you or talk shit to you about what you're doing. Like, I need you to know, or I want you to know, you know, that those people are always going to be there, you know, Um, once, you know, whether we make it or we don't make it or we become successful, whether it's because of UFC content or something else, people are going to have always some things to say, you know, and I don't ever want to suppress what I have to say because of comments or because of what people are saying about me. And I just want you guys to feel the same way, to be honest with you, because if you guys see the DMs, like I see, I, I got like racist DMs in there. I got hateful DMs in there. I got people talking about my mom. I got people talking about like, how I'm going to die. It's just, it's crazy. And um, it doesn't phase me. It makes me like, damn, you know, but another thing is that we see the negativity so much because the love goes unnoticed, you know, it's like, there's so many views and likes. We don't acknowledge that. We just no acknowledge the shitty comments. So, you know, it, it's normal to let the comments or the negativity, you know, take over more than than the good stuff that happens in your life. So I just wanted to get that out there because I'm sure I'm not the only one who deals with ugly comments or, or people around them that are just say shitty comments, you know, and, and we got to keep our head up. So little, little, uh, what is it called? I don't know what you want to call it, advice or whatever. But I'm going to keep making my content. I love the UFC, and I love talking about it. So here we go. Uh, first fight of the night was Bo Nickel, and uh, I want to say his name was like something Val. Um, we all felt bad for him. The UFC community was like, man, it sucks. Like he was in the airport with no team, no coaches. Um, I'm not sure who was in his corner uh, that night, but I hope he had some people with him. I'm sure he did. But, I mean, the fight, it started off like, oh, snap, this guy's coming out swinging, and then Bo Nickel just caught him. Uh, master class from Bo. I think the other guy maybe could have been nervous. Um, but I really hope he can have another shot just to, whether it's a, the ultimate fighter or something like that, but I hope he gets an opportunity. Dana White usually does show them love. So I really hope he does good. Um, Bo Nickel <laughs> sucks for him because he had a decent opponent and he was supposed to show out, you know, and, and show us what he has, you know, what is he made out of? How can he handle that guy? And, I mean, it was a good, it was going to be a good fight. And I really hope they can, you know, rearrange it to make it happen again. The same, the same fight. I forgot the other guy's name already. So, you know, but kudos to Bo. 
hopefully he he comes back and he has an interesting fight i just want to see him get tested i want to see how he does that's it next fight was uh dan hooker and i think i want to say it was jalen turner that fight was crazy uh i thought jalen turner was gonna get dan hooker you know dan hooker looks so slow in the fight i was like dude what's going on i don't know i was confused you know watching the first round or and then like the, the second round and i don't know i was just like what's going on with uh dan and then next thing you know he was getting caught he's getting caught and then next thing you know Jalen gets tired a little bit and Dan just turns it up on him and just lights him up the rest of the fight, you know, and then he eventually gets the decision and um, Dan Hooker broke his arm or his leg. I'm not sure. I want to say it was his leg, though. So that was a good ass fight. You know, I didn't expect it to go that that be that good. So I was really excited about that. And uh, I mean, you know, give another test to Dan with the recovery. Hopefully we see him next year uh, and maybe the blonde hair works for him. You know, we all love Charles for that. So maybe Dan just needs to do the same. Uh, no, this fight. <sighs> Drake is the Plusis versus Rob Whitaker. Right here on my notes, I just got first reaction. First reaction, I would just say I'm happy I was proved wrong, you know, because the Plusis or the, the pl yeah, the Plusis. I can't even say his name right. Drake is the Plusis. His his uh the way he carried himself is very interesting me and my girlfriend were just like this guy is goofy he looks goofy he stands goofy like he just looks awkward in the octagon you know when he's so swole too so it's just really interesting to see so you know i see first round is just kind of very close just touching up on each other seeing what's going on um and and in my head i was like rob was slow you know he was not that he's his hands are slow but he was getting slow to to get moving and then i started thinking last night i was like is he really getting is he slow or is it because the police is, is just pressuring him that like just constant 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 and you look back and you think about it like well yeah the police is, was pressuring him the whole fight you know till he got the the knockdown and then the tko of course but um, it was very interesting to see, you know, Dan Hooker kept throwing the left, the left. I was waiting for him to keep throwing that, to throw the right or show him the right at all. just Or, you know, yeah, just at all, just to see what the police was going to do. And, I mean, we never got to that point in the fight. And then, you know, very interesting because the police goes in just for the straight, you know, with the straight left. And then as soon as he lands, he just ducks, goes under because he knows – you know rob's right hand was coming next thing you know whitaker just drops to the fucking ground as in all fours and and the police was late to react because he had his eyes closed and he was covering himself so we were like what the heck that was so interesting next thing you know he just goes all over robert whitaker and i'm we're all i'm just like what the hell just what happened my girlfriend's like what the hell just happened you know and and we're all, I'm just like, wow. Like, you know, it was a statement. It was a bold statement. And I'm so happy the way he won. And I'm happy how he carried himself. And, man, this guy's the real deal, you know. What do they, they call him oxygen something. But, yeah, he's the real deal. I'm happy for him, to be honest with you. I never really hated the guy. I never had hate. But, you know, when people chirp and if we see you fight it's just like all right bro like let's see what you got you're gonna step up you're doing all that talk on the internet and the way you carry yourself and next thing you know he gets a tko and he gets everybody respect and um israel Sanya stuck <laughs> you know see him outside the ring he was confused he was stuck um i was really upset that he went up there to be honest with you i think they should have given the police his moment don't try and sell that fight the fight's going to sell itself everybody already wanted that fight nobody just thought he could get through uh robert whitaker but now that he can the fight's even more exciting the hype's going to be so more exciting and um israel Adesanya is going to get a lot of hate to the build up of the fight you know the way he i mean even if he does win you know after the way he just started yapping the n-word and saying this and saying that it's just like bro what do you, what's going on you know you know we all see israel Adesanya go up to the ring and um you know they're interviewing the police um and it's just like oh, why are they doing this man don't bring him up here you know and, and you just never know with izzy like he says a lot of weird stuff you know and and the guy not to hate on the guy but he can be a little you know odd at moments you know he says a lot of weird things and he does a lot of weird things um and you know that's him good for him whatever 
But um, he goes and depletes his face, and they try to hype up this fight. He just saying like, "What's up?" You know, n word, n word, n word. And I'm like, "Bro, do you expect the places to say this on on UFC?" I would have said it if I was him, to be honest with you. Like, what are they gonna do? They can't beat him up. You can't. He's. You know what I'm saying? So I, if I would have done it, to be honest with you, and I gotta go back and see the post interview because I heard that supposedly he did say that he was a real n word, but I don't know if he actually did or not. Um, but it was super embarrassing for Israel Asanya. Super cringe. Uh, a lot of people were. Yeah, the internet reacted how he reacted. So that fight's going to be really interesting. I hope they can make it, you know, at the end of the year or just close to the end of the year. Deplices, I think, didn't take too much damage, so his recovery wouldn't be won't be too bad. Israel just, you know, got done fighting like about was it April? I want to say. So I mean, it'll be it'll be a good fight. Now, I do want to say this about Izzy. You know, Izzy's really like I said, he's he's an odd dude. He paints his nails. He comes out. You know, he's Really, he does some real cool shit, but then he does some really, you know, questioning stuff. You know, and there's a, if you guys haven't heard in the Sean, Sean Strickland, you know, and Joe Rogan, where he talks about Izzy, how, um, you know, there's an interview where he talks about how he's Chinese. They asked him, like, if he's Nigerian or if he's from New Zealand or African, you know, I don't, I don't know how it goes, right? But they ask him and he says, no, I'm Chinese. And he takes out the Chinese flag. And I was like, bro, how do you, well, clearly you're not Chinese because he's black. And he wasn't, you know, he fought there. That's why I'm sure he said that. Um, and then he says that he's from Nigeria. Every time he comes out, it says New Zealand. Uh, so it's it's very confusing <laughs> to what he is. And the police does say that he's the he's going to be the real first African, you know, to be champion in, the, in that division and or something like that. Or the real African champ. I'm not sure. But that's that whole drama. And, and to be honest with you, when people start. So I had a problem with David Benavidez saying that he was Mexican because he didn't really start saying that he was. Well, actually, that's not true. I don't know. But I forgot what I, I want to say that he's like from Guatemala or something like that. Then he claimed to be Mexican. And in my head, I'm like, the only thing I can give to David Benavidez is that he probably feels good and about saying to be Mexican. And I mean, if he changes and he says that he's from Guatemala later on, then I'm like, bro, you're corny. But for Izzy to say that he's from China, you know, years back, and then to say who, whether he was from Nigeria or New Zealand, to kind of switch up who you represent, it, it's like, you know, what are you doing? And, and it kind of seems like it's cloud chasing, and that's what it is. So, you know, I really don't know what Izzy can do. You know, I think he's done enough where people are kind of like, dude, you're really cringe. You know, and again, I'm sure Izzy's a cool ass dude and he's a fucking beast, you know, but the, like I said, the things he does are just very questionable, you know, so I don't know. Now, like I said, that fight's going to be lit, exciting, you know, and um, I mean, we all know Israel's really good, so we'll see. It could just be an easy dub for him, but we have a fight and we have a good fight. There'll be drama and um, so we'll we'll get to see all that hype now. <sighs> I want to say this and get it off my chest, you know, but you guys, you know, the haters at least talk about how I'm a, you know, dick rider of this person of that. And I'm be like, be honest with you. There's two fighters that I really, really, really do support in the UFC. Um, and, and one of them is Brandon Moreno. Like Brandon Moreno is my guy. He's my number one. F I'm, he's my number one, you know, in my eyes, he's, he's the guy, you know, and, you know, obviously I like Charles a lot and I like Volkanovski a lot, but Brandon is my guy. I'm t when I saw him win that, the title fight against Figueredo, I mean, dude, I fucking cried. I was like, and then the speech after, like he, he gave me something and I, I, I believed him, you know, and I was like, this guy, like, dude, I'm going to support you. When he came to Dallas, we, we, but we got the tickets and I was there. Like I wanted to watch him fight and I was so happy to see him fight. I remember tears coming out of my eyes when he was walking out. And even badass to see him get the TKO. So coming into this fight, I was I felt really calm. I was like, dude, Brandon Moreno has been very calm and collective. You know, I think that was his sixth title fight in a row. You know, and I didn't even think about that till I saw that. And I'm like, and I knew he's been in title fights, but I was like, dude, six title fights, like dun 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 dun. It's impressive, you know, it's impressive for a flyweight. Um and now let's talk about the fight. You know, coming into the fight with Pantoja Moreno, 
I saw, I forgot what episode it was of the vlog. I think it was two or three where Pantoja is in Vegas. He's like, this is my city. I'm going to, you know, I feel this energy with this city. And it's just the way he said it. And I got scared. I was like, damn, this dude's motivated. Like, he came there and, and he soaked it in. And he didn't like, you know, like, oh, shit, like, I'm in Vegas. He was just like, I want to say, like, he felt like he was home. I want to say, like, this is my time. Like, that's how I took it. And I got scared. I was like, damn, this guy might come in there with some heat. You know, you start watching his fights and his performances. And you're like, this guy's good. So... Coming to the fight, I knew it was going to be a really close fight. First round starts off, it was all Pantosha. And and when that first round ended, I was like, that's it, you know, because he used all the gas in the tank. That was in my head. Brandon Moreno, he's been in, in five-minute wars with Figa, uh, Davidson Figueredo. So I was like, you know, Brandon Moreno can eat the punches from Davidson. Like, you know, he, Davidson is one hell of a puncher. So he can be, he'll be able to handle Pantoja. And he did. Now you get into second round. Brandon Moreno has a spectacular, spectacular second round. And then third round comes and it gets, it gets close. Fourth round comes. It's even closer. Fifth round comes and it's close. Now, in my, I know a lot of people are mad that Brandon Moreno should have won this, this, and that. And, I have a lot of love for Brandon Moreno, you know, but I was mad. I was angry at him. I was like, dude, you're the champion. Why are you letting him do this to you? Why are you letting him get on top of you? Why are you letting him grab you like this? Why aren't you showing anything to at least get the points? His jabs were on point. He could have kept it. And I was so pissed, so pissed that he only threw one leg kick to the head that's it he threw a few to the legs but i'm like bro you should have used your legs so much more <clears throat> and i understand you you're off balance when you throw a leg and you don't want to get taken down but brandon moreno's ground game was good enough to to stay in there and, and to eventually get up he was never really in trouble i mean just and the fourth and the fifth where the Pantoja actually had his back standing up. I mean, and Pantoja at the end of the round, he was holding for dear life because he knew that he was winning this fight, you know, and, and Brandon Moreno knew his corner fucking knew Pantoja's corner knew Pantoja knew. So it's like Brandon Moreno, you going into that fifth round and, and you do that. And I'm sure he was hurt because he broke his fucking arm. And it's sad that he broke his arm. You know, and I'm, I understand more. I wonder when he broke it, what round he did it. Um, but you know, it was so sad to see Brandon Moreno lose, but I'm really happy for Pantoja because he put out a really good performance. He underestimated Brandon Moreno, no doubt about it. He went into that first round trying to take his head out and he didn't, and he failed. And I'm sure that Dow creeped in second round, but I don't know what his corner told him. I don't know what he told himself and he fucking just turned it up three, four, Three and four, fifth round, not too impressive, but three and four, he really did a good job. And the first round, of course. And um, again, Pantoja, he did more than what he needed to do. And to see a new champion in the flyweight division, you know, it was like, it hurt me, <laughs> to be honest with you. I was like, fuck, man, this sucks. But, I mean, that guy has a story. You know, he apparently, like, he was doing ill eats like two fights before this one. So like, I believe it was sometime last year, you know, he was already top five fighter. So that kind of, that kind of blows. UFC needs to do something about that. Um, and then, you know, the whole dad situation at the, at the end where he tells like, dad, do you like me now? Or some shit like that. And I'm like, fuck man, that's deep. Like you had to go through some shit with your mom and your brothers or sisters, you know, and to basically tell your dad to fuck himself at the end and, and in front of everybody, you know, and there's a lot of people that can relate to that man right there. And I'm happy that he won and I'm happy that he came out on top because he deserved it. He came out the better fighter that night. He, he showed up more heart, you know, and, and, and I know that he was holding on for dear life at the end. But I promise you guys, like, if all any of us were in that situation, we would be holding on to your life. If all we had to do was hold on for two more minutes and you're the champion of the world, who wouldn't do that? I know I would. So we can call him a coward, a pussy, whatever. But that man fought his life out. And, I mean, he at the end, and people talk about, like, the decision. That dude was dead fucking tired. He was like this. He couldn't even 
he couldn't even fucking hold himself up anymore you know and and he wasn't down like he knew he knew he won that fight i thought he won that fight well deserved you know and i'm happy that there's a new champion and i'm the story even makes me more happier now it kind of sucks for brandon moreno because now he has to basically run him back with this guy and if he does beat him you kind of have to give him the rematch so you're gonna have another brandon moreno and figure story and um, i just hope you know brandon moreno's gonna have to make a choice either he comes back and fights uh pantosha or maybe he fights somebody else i think brandon moreno should fight someone else to be honest with you let pantosha have the belt for a little bit and you know you'll you'll fight pantosha again like sometime next year the end of the year next year i don't think he needs a uh run run right back or maybe he does i don't know but um Brandon Moreno, I mean, we love him, to be honest with you. And he's the champion, and he's one of the best flyweights, you know. And Pantoja is one of the best. Davidson Figueredo is one of the best. So kudos to Pantoja. I really hope, you know, he enjoys this moment because, man, Brandon Moreno had a target on his back for six fights, five fights kind of, you could say um and pantoja is gonna have to do the same and we haven't had i think a flyweight champion like brandon moreno you know and that whole back and forth with figarello that never happened in the ufc so it's all new to us um but again brandon moreno is going to come back stronger i hope he recovers nice and i mean he probably won't fight for another year to be honest with you so pantoja is not going to have an option to fight just who does he fight next? You know, would it be the winner of the next Figueredo fight soon? So we'll see if he fights the winner of that or if he fights someone else. But I hope he enjoys it. He well deserved. I know a lot of people are upset about Brandon Moreno, but guys, you know, Brandon Moreno, whether it's because of his arm or because of something else, like Pantoja walked in there, took his belt, and dipped. And that's how it happened. So, yeah. Now, we had Yair Rodriguez versus Volkanovski. Uh, first reaction, not surprised. A lot of you guys were really upset or, you know, people really thought Yair Rodriguez was going to win. I was really shocked, you know. I'm not talking down on Yair, but we're talking about Volkanovski here. We're talking about pound for pound now, you know, in the world. <laughs> and Volkanovski's good. Like, I was like, bro, do you not see what he did against Islam? You know, and how he handled everyone else before that. Um, Volkanovski is one of the fighters, one of the best fighters ever, 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 ever. He, he's top 10 ever, you know, and that top 10 list is pretty stacked. But in my opinion, he's top 10. Um, and Volkanovski at the moment is number one. There's no doubt about it. So your ear was threatful. You know, I knew the leg kicks. We all knew the leg kicks were going to be crazy, you know. But there was a moment where Volk kind of got upset and just turned it up on Yair and I told you guys Volk is going to take his time he's going to be patient because he doesn't want to risk anything Volk is a very very smart fighter and there's no reason why he would have risked anything against Yair because Yair will throw you weird shit and weird angles so he went in there took his time studied the guide and dude he fucking in the third round he basically manhandled Yair Rodriguez so it wasn't close I knew it wasn't going to be close. And there's really nothing much to say but that. Uh, let me see. Oh, so people were talking about the headbutt, you know, that how that had to do something. I'm like, man, that headbutt had nothing to do. He probably gets hit. He probably got hit with harder shit in the fight. So that's not even an excuse. The reality is that Yair is just not at Volkanovski's level. Max Holloway's better than Yair. So... That said, in my opinion, Yari Rodriguez is there number three or number four. Um, after the fight, he got uh, face to face with Aaliyah. I thought that was badass. Like he was super cool, but he let Aaliyah know who the champ is and that he's gonna have to get to work if he wants to take that belt away. You know, Volkanovski is gonna go through surgery. We'll see if he comes back later this year. I just hope he takes his time. He's a smart guy, so he will. Um, but. Even with Aaliyah, I think Aaliyah is an easier fighter for Volkanovski. And you guys might be like, what the fuck? But I'm going to tell you why. I mean, with Aaliyah, it's, he's fighting somebody that's the same height and the same build, right? Like, they're both stocky, short dudes in the division. So someone like Volkanovski, he's fought people taller than him, 
you know, skinnier than him, big, not bigger because he's pretty stocky, but skinny like Max, Islam, Korean Zombie, Yair Rodriguez, long, skinny dudes, you know, and, and Aliyah's a short, stocky guy. So I think, you know, getting your hands on Aliyah is going to be so much more easier. And when Volkanovski gets your, his hands on you, like it's over, you know, it's just over. You know, <laughs> that's it. So Volkanovski is going to go ahead and, and take care of business, and I hope he beats Aaliyah and then go takes that 155 belt. And I'm telling you guys right now, Volkanovski is going to be double fucking champ at 145 and at 155, and he's going to go down as one of the best athletes, great, one of the best fighters in the world, no doubt about it. And that was that was UFC 290. <laughs> Super exciting. The next one is on July 29th, UFC 291. Uh, people are talking about what's going to happen with Islam since Charles doesn't want to fight in Abu Dhabi and um, how Volk's going to get surgery. So does he fight, you know, the winner of Dustin and Justin? Um, and I told you guys, Islam should fight Ben Benil Derouche. Uh, you guys laughed at me, but I'm telling you guys, that's the fight to make. It makes sense. I don't think anybody would be upset, especially after the fight, because I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. Um. So I think Islam should lock it in with Benil. Give him the title shot. I mean, if you say you're that guy, Benil shows, showed you that he's really good. So go for it, you know. And, and if you want to give it to Dustin or Justin, that's fine. But I think it should be Benny and then Volkanovski after that, to be honest with you. All right, guys. I won't see you guys till next Tuesday probably or next Friday. We'll be moving out this week. So that'll be exciting. I really hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Have a good week. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Peace.